Tonight on New Center, the Career Center relocates, the organizational spotlight falls on WCAL, and the Vulcans look to beat Shippensburg. All these stories and more next on New Center. Good evening and welcome to CU TV News Center for the week of September 24th, 2015. I'm Zach Prosba. And I'm Jennifer Germano. Over the last few years, California University has been able to host many traveling exhibits from many organizations such as the S Smithsonian. This fall, the Mandarino Library is hosting an exhibit on Abe Lincoln and his involvement with the Civil War and constitutionality. I had a chance to discuss the exhibit with Dr. Comfer, a professor in the History Department, about its impact on the university questions about that we still talk about today about the Constitution. So it kind of puts history in a different light, um, shows the, the relevance of history and, ta and thinks about some of the things that happened in the 19th century that are still, that we're still talking about today. The opportunity to host this exhibit is a prestigious one that is not afforded to just anyone. It's part of a grant program that we applied for. Uh, Bill Malloy from the library and me from the history department uh, applied for an NEH grant and it was partnered with the American Libraries Association so it can only be displayed at libraries and it can only be displayed at libraries that are open to the public um, so it has to be not just, a, we're a public institution and so we're a state, you know, as a state institution we're open to the public and we thought it would be a great opportunity for the community and uh, the Cal Cal community to see it. If you are interested in seeing Into the History of Abe Lincoln, the exhibit is open until October 16th and has much for students and the community to learn from it. Well, I hope they'll see this history as alive and history as relevant and not just something that happened in the 19th century, but something that is relevant today. The same kind of questions. This is about Lincoln and the Constitution, how he struggled to fight a war and still honor American ideals. And we're doing basically the same thing today. And some of the exact same questions are coming up. And we can see how somebody that we think was great um, dealt with these issues. Um, it wasn't easy and it was controversial. And the country is you know, continuing to evolve and, and work with the same problem. So I'm hoping that they'll it'll just make people think about um, some of the issues and, and make it and think about history. As the school year continues on, there have been different themed weeks for students to interact with each other and organizations on campus. This past week was Career Week, where students had the opportunity to build their resumes, connect with career advisors, and network with potential employers. Part of the festivities for Career Week I mentioned was a resume check done by the Career and Professional Development Center at Cal U. I was able to take a tour of the center's new location in the Natali Student Center, formerly located in Eberly Hall, as well as talk to Rhonda Gifford, director of the Career Center on the services offered to students at Cal U. The kind of tagline for our office is explore, um, experience, and connect. So our services really fall into those three categories. Some examples of exploring would be career assessments that we offer uh, online. One of them is called FOCUS, and a lot of students take that in first year seminar, but some students just decide to take that again, just to get a feel for what their interests are, their skills, and how that matches up with majors and career options. Besides the services that are offered in the Career and Personal Development Center, some of the big new additions are a new location now in the Natali Student Center after formerly being being located in Eberly Hall. We are so excited to be here because students are here. There's just an energy uh, in this building. Uh, so we really, really are enjoying being here. Uh, first thing we noticed is the students hanging out in, I guess, what they call the Heritage Lounge, mm -hmm. uh, outside, right outside our front office doors, which is fantastic. So it's nice just to be able to go out there. We've actually even had an event out there already, a block party that took place earlier in September. Uh, and drew probably more students than we've had at other events uh, in the past. And one big event that the Career and Professional Development Center is planning is the Cal U Professional Job and Internship Fair, which is coming in early October. The Cal U Job and Internship Fair is taking place on Tuesday, October 6th from 11 to 2 in the Convocation Center. So students don't need to pre-register. They can just come, dress professionally, I would say, in a suit or something close to it. If you don't have a suit, uh, that's fine. Um, and bring lots of resumes and bring your Cal card because we will swipe the Cal card at the fair for any faculty or other groups that want evidence that you attended the fair. Um, but we look forward to having a lot of students there. It's important that students attend so that employers will come back and recruit next year. 
This Tuesday was Cal U's annual organization fair held outside in front of the Natali Student Center. As an opportunity for students to find clubs that may interest them, we had CUTV's Mike Mays go and talk to numerous clubs about their organization. Hi, we're Student PSTA and we're a club for all education majors. Also Lambda Delta, which is a freshman honor society for all majors. If you get a 3.5 or higher GPA in your first semester, you can be invited over the Christmas break and you can join our honor society. We board members of the Black Student Union. Black Student Union promotes diversity. We're the Council for Exceptional Children. We're the special ed club here on campus. We meet every other Tuesday at 11 o'clock in Keystone. And we're open to all majors, not just education majors. The Rainbow Alliance and we are the LGBT club. Hi, I'm the president of the math club here at Cal U. We're also a part of the Future Math Club of America. We go to conferences, we travel, and we just we like math. We're one of those unique people. So. We dance at boys and girls basketball games and men's hockey. Come join us. Uh, basically, we shoot sport and sporting plays every Sunday up at the Cal Hill Gun Club. Uh, we are also interested in starting pistol and rifle. It's in the works right now. Uh, we're the Strength and Fitness Club. We do a variety of fitness activities on campus and off campus. We yeah. play like football games for charity, uh, 5K run walks, and uh, strength and fitness competitions. We are with the Underground Cafe. We put on a weekly open mic event uh, every Thursday at 9 p.m. We have our meetings uh, every Thursday right before we set up at 7 p.m. This Friday, September 25th, is the graduation deadline for all students looking to graduate at December commencement. Students need to have all proper documents into their advisor, as well as a go-through graduation check with the appropriate administrator in their department and college. Registration for Cal U's winter session opens in a few weeks for students interested in taking a class or a few to make up some credits or get ahead of schedule in terms of graduation. A list of classes being offered during the winter session can be found on the Cal U website or in students' VIP portal under class registration. ESPN has announced that nearly 200 to 300 employees will be laid off in the coming months as the sports conglomerate again sifts through their ranks looking to cut budget and make a more solidified business. As part of the Disney company, it is surprising to see these layoffs as Disney has a general no layoff policy under their employment terms. To find out the latest news on campus and elsewhere, make sure you pick up a copy of the Cal Times when it is released every Friday around campus. To preview what is coming up in this week's edition, we sat down with Jose Negron, Editor-in-Chief of the Cal Times. Hey Cal U, this is Jose Negron again from the Cal Times. We got a lot in our publication this week. In news, we are covering the Tattoo and Society talk that happened this past week, as well as the all-important organization fair that happened on 3rd Street. Uh, in opinion, we tackle the uh, subject of National Geographic being bought by 21st Century Fox. Will content change in that particular publication? And in sports, we have Miranda Fuzzi as this week's Athlete of the Week. Be sure to pick up a copy of the Cal Times around campus and check us out at caltimes.org. So, Jen, I mentioned it is Career Week, and the question that you're always asked when you're little and you know when you're in high school is. What do you want to do when you grow up? And we're both seniors now, so I'm going to ask you, what do you want to do when you grow up and when you leave college in May after you graduate? Well, for me, that's really actually a complicated question. <laughs> I have a bunch of different things I want to do, but the two that stand out to me the most, I believe, are I want to work for Walt Disney World. I want to be in part of the Disney company, uh, maybe in marketing or um, public relations, something in that as well as one that's not really related, marine biologists, I want to work with dolphins and training them, teaching and learning from them how much they can learn, their intelligence levels, things like that. And I, myself, I'm a comm studies radio TV major. That's what I want to do. I want to be in you know, sports, but I've actually transitioned myself from TV and radio to writing. I like writing about the games and still going to the games, so I think that's mm -hmm. what I want to do when I grow up. That sounds really interesting. And coming up after the break, Damon Madsen has your weather forecast. Stay tuned.
don't miss your chance to catch the best pro wrestling on the planet. Ring of Honor returns to the Pittsburgh area at the Convo Center at Cal U. Friday, September 25th at 7.30 p.m. With appearances by the Briscoes, Jay Lethal, Adam Cole, and many more. Experience body slamming, super kicking pro wrestling action live. Visit ROHwrestling.com now for tickets and info. The time is now, the place is here. Stop running, face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot, can't afford to miss. The time is now, the place is here. Stop running, face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot, can't afford to miss. So let's get it, let's go. Go hard and go home. Welcome back to CUTV's News Center, and now we are joined by Damon Matson, our Caillou uh, meteorologist. And Damon, go ahead and take it away for our five-day forecast coming up. Yes, we're getting down towards the end of September here, guys. We're going to try to get outside as much as you can, do as many outdoor activities as you can while the weather is still warm before we move on into October. As we take a look here, this weekend we're going to see some nice weather tomorrow in the low 80s with some sunny skies, but as we move on into the weekend, it's going to cool down low to mid-70s, and those showers might be around on Sunday, so we'll keep an eye out for that. And then next week, we start out the week nice on Monday, but then again on Tuesday, we should see the rain return back to the area. So yeah, guys, I know my family and I are going to try to go out and try to get some camping in this weekend. We may get tampered down by some of the rain, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of people are trying to get those last minute outdoor activities in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always good. You know, the first day of fall was a couple days ago, so you're trying to get to the before some of the fall, a little bit chillier weather hits. Uh, my question for you is, because we're going to Edinburgh this week for the CTV football, uh, Cal U football game. What's it going to be like in Edinburgh, if you know, if anything? I think you guys are going to see pretty decent weather. I think it's going to be cloudy. You guys really aren't going to see that much sun, but I think you're going to still be in the upper 70s, so it shouldn't be too awful for you guys out there. You're not going to get drenched or anything like that, so I wouldn't worry about that. That's good. I'm definitely looking forward to getting into fall, but no rain. I like rain, but not when it starts getting cooler, because then it gets, start, it gets to be cold rain, and I don't like cold rain. Yeah, that can be quite annoying at times, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> Thanks. And when we come back, Ryan Kaufman takes over the entertainment report. Stay tuned. Catch all the excitement under the Friday Night Lights with CUTV's High School Football Game of the Week. You have the best seats in the house as the area's longest running high school football telecast, now in its 29th season, brings you the area's biggest games. Don't forget to watch the replay on CUTV, Sundays at 8 and Thursdays at 5.30. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Ryan Kaufman. Are you aware that there are 100 plus clubs and organizations on campus? Feature reporter Anthony Diagostino shines a spotlight on a few organizations for us. This is Anthony Diagostino reporting for CUTV. Over the course of the semester, I'll be taking you on a guided tour of the different clubs and organizations you can be a part of here at Cal U. This week, I had the pleasure of visiting WCAL, the campus radio station. I talked to station manager Zach Fell first about why students should join WCAL. You should get involved with WCAL because it's perfect for anyone in the communications department and the, specifically the radio and TV field who are looking for the professional experience and to kind of get their foot in the door and to see what it's like, what it's going to be like for them after they graduate. Zach also discussed why he joined the radio station. I found, out fr I found friends down here. And I have found a career path that I think is going to work with my major from here on. And I'm not involved in the communications department. He also gave some great advice for students on getting involved and how they can get involved at WCAL. 
my number one advice to all freshmen, or really anyone, is to get involved and get involved early. It's easy to get involved. All you need to do is put in eight hours of training. From there, you take a little written and board test to prove, uh, prove your knowledge and what you've learned. And then you can have your own radio show where you play music or talk. And really, it's going to follow the form that you think uh, you sh you'd have fun doing. I also got to talk with one of WCAL's newest DJs, Eddie Kuntz, and I got to hear how he likes it at WCAL. I joined uh, WCAL because I just have a huge passion for music. I've always kind of wanted to do this, and seeing the guys down doing the remotes always just got me into it. I love it here. I've always just come down here ever since I joined just to hang out during other people's shows too. And like I find myself down here somewhere between like five and six times a week outside of my own show. It feels like a big family down here, and you make so many friends. And it's just if it's something you enjoy, just if you enjoy music, you'll enjoy this, and you'll get to put your own music out to the world with what you like and share your views on it too. And it's just a great way to express yourself. WCAL meets every Monday at nine o'clock p.m. in the Tally Room, three nineteen. That's all for this week. If you would like your club or organization to be highlighted on CUTV News Center, be sure to tweet us at CUTV underscore PA and make sure to leave the appropriate contact information. For CUTV News Center, I'm Anthony Diagostino. Infinite Opportunities, a half-hour public affairs program featuring Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education Universities, will premiere at 2 p.m. Sunday on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. The program, which will air weekly, will feature stories about unique programs, student life, and academic offerings at the 14 state system universities. It also will include interviews with university leaders and stakeholders, as well as one-on-one -on -one discussions between system, state system leaders and the university presidents. This past Sunday played host to the 67th Annual Emmy Awards. The big winner of the night? Game of Thrones, with 24 nominations and 12 awards. Best Supporting Actor went to Peter Dinklage, who is also in Game of Thrones. John Hamm won Best uh, Leading Actor in a TV series, Mad Men. The Daily Show received two awards, which is a fitting end to Jon Stewart's reign on The Daily Show. Finally, Tracy Morgan made his first appearance back on TV since his accident in 2014. Every once in a while, a political figure or a celebrity will say or do something that makes you stop to and think to yourself, did I just hear that correctly? As the new entertainment anchor, I've discovered it is my job to bring these, shall we say, bizarre actions to light. Let's begin with the Pope. And it's not what he said, but rather what he's driving around in. When Pope Francis touched down in D.C. on Tuesday, he shocked the world when he didn't get into a limo or some expensive car. He climbed inside of a black Fiat 500L, and boy did that make a big boost for Fiat dealerships. A local D.C. Fiat dealership said that they have been slammed with customers ever since people first saw what he's cruising, around, er, cru was cruising the town in. They also said that Fiat Corporate did not give any dealership a heads up that the Pope would be chauffeured around in one either. This is all a part of the pontiff's stance on being closer to the people. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker has dropped out of the Republican race for president. This comes only after two months when he was leading in the polls. At the time when he exited the crowded room full of hot air, he had a measly less than one half of one percent in the polls. The dropout said in a press conference that this is God's way of helping him to lead by getting out of the way. He also went on to say that others should follow in his footsteps, too. A mom and her daughter tried to purchase tickets to a Taylor Swift concert through an online website, but came to find out that they had been scammed. The Kansas City mom said she went with a... She, the Kansas City mom said she met with a man codenamed, and I'm not making this up, Willy Wonka. The box office denied her and her daughter entry into a concert when a kind stranger saw what had happened. She walked up to the box office with the two tickets for the victimized mom and daughter. Another stranger also chipped in to help purchase the tickets while giving the little girl $20 to spend inside the concert. Last night, CUTV premiered the new student-run show titled After Hours. It is a late-night talk show with humor, and they ended it with some difficult challenges. Cheyenne White was the host for the challenge segment, and she came up with some difficult tasks for our members, some ranging, some ranging from clap your elbows and knees together three times to making a song up about cutlery. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday uh, at 10.30 p.m. to catch the latest installment of After Hours. And to round out the entertainment report for this week, we have Jurassic World in the Vulcan Theater. 
Set 20 years after the original Jurassic Park was readying to open to the public, Jurassic World takes you into what could have been as a fully functioning theme park around dinosaurs. Like the original classic, however, everything goes completely wrong and leaves tourists and park operators scrambling to escape terror of prehistoric creatures come back to life. Starring Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard, Jurassic World is currently the highest grossing film in 2015 and is sure to be a fan favorite for a long time to come. And guys, we have some exciting news coming in from Nickelodeon, that being that they're bringing back 90s shows. It's called The Splat. Yeah, that, that's definitely exciting because we're 90s kids. Uh, it's going to be starting, I think you said, Monday, October 5th. That's my birthday. Uh, <laughs> so happy birthday to you early, I guess. Uh, so we're going to be seeing, you know, Hey Arnold, uh, Rugrats, Cat Dog, Absolutely. a bunch of classic shows that we all grew up with, and it's very exciting. I'm really excited to get to see all of them, too, because I remember when some of them came up on Netflix, I would sit there and just watch them, and just watch them, and watch them for hours, because I missed them. They were such good shows. I remember watching um, Rugrats in Paris mm -hmm. this summer until they took it off Netflix, and I was super disappointed. So I'm really excited that I'm going to get to watch Rugrats, just the TV show, anytime I want. It's going to be on Teen Nick on, uh, at night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. as well. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Well, there goes my nights of sleeping. I mean, <laughs> college students have it already hard enough trying to find sleep. Well, Nick Lewin's just making it even harder for oh, yeah. us. Well, thanks, Ryan. And when we come back, Matt Hagee has your sports report. Stay tuned. Watch CUTV online anytime, anywhere. Check out your favorite original programs. Coverage of the biggest events on campus. And cheer on your Vulcan sports teams. CU TV. Log on. Tune in now. Visit cutv.calu.edu backslash live. The time is now. The place is here. Stop running. Face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot. Can't afford to miss. The time is now. The place is here. Stop running. Face your fear. When it all comes down to this, you only get one shot. Can't afford to miss. So let's get it. Let's go. Go hard and go home. Take preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Matt Hagee with your sports report. The California Vulcans football team looked to bounce back from a heartbreaking loss to Bloomsburg. Last Saturday, the Shippensburg Red Raiders came to town for the Vulcans' second straight home game. Let's go to the highlights. We we'll see a nice afternoon for football, and California kicks off the scoring just as they did versus Bloomsburg with the same person who scored first in the Bloomsburg game. John Franklin made it 7-0 Vulcans. Then Shippensburg strikes right back here. Andrew Smith from about two yards out gets it in and ties the game at seven with just a little bit to go in the first quarter. Then Shippensburg would take their first lead of the game here on a Billy Dean field goal to make it 10-7 in the start of the second quarter. That's when California's offense began to get rolling. Here, John Franklin, again, five-yard touchdown, second of the game, second of the first half, and gave California the lead 14-10. And then James Harris here, first touchdown pass since the Virginia State game in week one. He gets to Devin Lomax's first career touchdown catch as a Vulcan and extends the Vulcan lead to 20 to 10 with five minutes to go in the, in the second quarter. Then James Harris again, a little bit longer this time. This time the Luke Smory throws off two defenders and nonchalantly walks into the end zone. 27 to 10 Vulcans as we're getting close to halftime. This is where it got crazy. Last play of the first half, Shippensburg back to punt and Aaron Terry fields it from the three-yard line. Makes a couple guys miss, and uh-oh, look out. Last play of the first half, Aaron Terry punt return. Are you kidding me? 
97 yards that went down, and California made 34 to 10. There was a flag on the play. Many thought it was on California, but it was on Shippensburg, so it stood 34 to 10, California, as I mentioned, going into the second half. Now, Shippensburg trying to make a comeback he here with their own special teams. Sheldon Mayer, Shippensburg's best weapon, was shut down so far, but then right here, he goes crazy on the Vulcan special teams and you see right there he splits the two defenders one man to beat and goes all the way for touchdown his was 82 yard punt return and California is starting to let Shippensburg back in the game again just like they did against Bloomsburg and here Zappa, Ryan Zapatiki quarterback Sheldon Mayer makes a nice diving catch in the end zone and cuts the Vulcan lead to one score. Now after a field goal, Shippensburg had a chance to tie the game with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Zapatiki, but have no fear, Aaron Perry's here with the interception to seal the win for the Vulcans. And the Vulcans hold on for a 34-26 victory. John Franklin finished the day over 100 yards for the first time in his Vulcan career, and Aaron Terry's big day garnered him PSAC West Special Team Player of the Week honors. Luke Rapchak had another monster game with 16 tackles, and Errol Brewster and Cameron Tarver had two sacks each. California improves the 2-1 and one and will hit the road this Saturday as they travel up Interstate 79 to take on the winless Edinburgh Fighting Scots. You can listen to the game on 91.9 .9 WCAL starting at noon, and CUTV will have the rebroadcast of the game on Monday at 6 and Tuesday at 4. This will be the first trip to Edinburgh since 2012 for the Vulcans, and even though Edinburgh is winless, the Scots should not be taken lightly. Here is a preview of Saturday's contest. The team is beginning to take shape of this Vulcans football team. Big first halves, but then vaulting in the second half. The Vulcans were lucky to pull out the win against Shippensburg last Saturday, but regardless, a win is a win. This week, the Vulcans begin PSAC West play on the road against the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Edinburgh is now past the Cody Harris era, and the 2015 season has not been so kind to the Scots. Edinburgh has started 0-3 for the second straight season and has struggled with new quarterback Jake Sisson. Despite the start, the Vulcans' defense will need the key on top receiver Darren Massey. Massey leads the team with 332 yards and only has one touchdown. It seems the Vulcans are greatly missing the presence of Gary Brown. James Harris performed better than against Bloomsburg, but still seemed inconsistent. It is uncertain of Brown's status for Saturday, but understudy receivers like Luke Smory and Devin Lomax will need to step up again for the Vulcans. The Vulcans easily mowed over the Scots last season at home despite a sloppy second half. Sound familiar? This week, the Vulcans will look to right the ship and keep the pedal to the floor against the Scots. Edinburgh may be winless, but look for the Scots to be hungry to win in front of their home fans. The Scots have not defeated the Vulcans since 2004, which shows the dominance of the Vulcans have had over Edinburgh the past decade. An old-time rivalry will renew, and the Vulcans look to continue momentum on the road. This past Tuesday, the California Vulcans volleyball team welcomed in a national power to Hammer Hall as they faced off against the 10th-ranked Wheeling Jesuit Cardinals. California looked to stop a five-game losing streak to the Cardinals, four of which coming from the Atlantic Regional Final losses. CUTV covered the matchup, and now let's go to the highlights here from Hammer Hall. Tuesday night, you see Miranda Fuzzi and Mary Lavery getting some orders here, and California here gets the block here for Wheeling Jesuit, and they'll actually get the first point of the match here in Game 1. But then... California comes right back here again, down for it. Mary Lavery gets the kill on that one to keep California around in this game. But Wheeling Jesuit was just too much right there. And you can see Emma Shoeliker with the kill for Wheeling Jesuit. And California not go away, that was Abby Matuzak getting the kill. She had a pretty good game for California. But then here is a match point for Wheeling Jesuit to take game one. In game two, California again in game one got the first point of the of the first game. Now Wheeling Jesuit trying to fight back again here. California, Sierra Barrett. Yes, that is Sierra Barrett, women's basketball player, making her first season as a volleyball player for the Vulcans. And Wheeling Jesuit again just too strong with outside with the outside hitters. And you can see Jessica Toby there getting the kill. And then watch this. Sierra Barrett. Bam! Right on the ground there. Sierra Barrett. That was a, probably the most powerful kill of the night. Vulcans hung around again, but Wheeling Jesuit took game two. Now California needed to win game three to stay alive here. And they try their best. Mary Lavery again getting started early with the kill to kick California back to one. But in the end, Wheeling Jesuit just too strong. You can see another big kill there. That was from Sydney Obringer. 
And then here, match point, Wheeling Jesuit sweeps the Vulcans 3 0 and with a three series to none set win. And Mar Mary Lavely and Ad Abby Matuzic led the way for the Vulcans with eight kills, along with Sierra Barrett picking up seven kills. Megan Litaborski tallied 15 assists and 12 digs. Now the team looks to this weekend as they will host four PSAC East teams starting Friday morning with East Stroudsburg at Hamer Hall. Now it's time for the Hagee Six. Here are three games from both college football and the NFL that I will feel be the top games to watch this week. We start with college and the big matchup is in the SEC this week is the contest in Gainesville between the Tennessee Volunteers and Florida Gators. Each team looks to return to national prominence and keep pace with the Georgia Bulldogs. Then the Lone Star State Big 12 Conference play is underway as the third ranked TCU Horned Frogs travel to Lubbock to take on the upset minded Texas Tech Red Raiders at 445. The big Saturday night match primetime matchup this week is in Tucson as ninth ranked UCLA will hit the road to face the 16th ranked Arizona Wildcats. The Bruins defense looks to stand tall despite losing star linebacker Miles Jack for the season with, with an injury. Shifting the NFL, we start with a pair of 1 p.m. contests involving AFC North teams as the Steelers look to build off last week's win when they square off against the St. Louis Rams. In Baltimore, the Bengals travel to face a Ravens squad still looking for their first win of the season. And finally, the big Monday night battle at Lambeau Field as the Chiefs to travel to Green Bay to take on the Packers and rebound from a home meltdown against the Broncos. And guys, real quick, Pirates last night, three straight years they've clinched on a playoff spot on September 23rd. That's a pretty cool day in Pittsburgh. It is, and I'm excited to see what they can do. I've been watching them, and I've been watching the cards, and I think they have what it takes to catch them. Yeah, I think they're going to catch the Cardinals in division, and if they can do that, I think they'll win the World Series. It's going to be really great, and they get the Cardinals this weekend. should be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Matt. Well, that'll do it for this week's News Center. Stay be sure to check out on our CUTV channel on, CUTV on YouTube at CUTV News Center. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.